Hey, I want to go over some things. Uh, when you're buying a used vehicle, check the radiators up in front. It's good habit. If you see any that are damaged, if you see them that are bent in, that's usually a good sign. This is radiator support from mine. I got overexcited when I bought it. Didn't check it over. You're going to want to also check for proper fan spinning. Hard to see, but... So the fans in these, most fans should free spin. Unless you get a viscous, those could be a little different. If they do not spin, you will basically have no air conditioning until you move. That's normally a good sign that they're not functioning properly. Uh, check to see if there's water coming underneath of the car as well. That's to tell you that the evaporator is working. This is if it's a it's a nice, warm, hot day. Uh, other things to look at when buying a used vehicle. You're going to want to look around here, particularly around the uh, strut towers. If it was in an accident, you'll see more than likely some welding or previous damage that was repaired. It's normally pretty easy to tell. Another good thing to do is actually to do a side profile. Look at the difference between your uh, your gap between the back of the fender and the wheel. Uh, I actually had a Fusion that was I bought like that. I didn't care. It's needed a cheap vehicle, and you could tell. You could definitely tell it was in an accident. You could tell that there was a weld, basically right along here right along here that where they fixed it of course it was all on a farm where they did it because that's just what it is around here half of them are all farm rides anyway but good thing to keep note is your space here on pickups it's a little different uh on gm pickups the front actually tracks wider than the rear so you'll never really see a difference you can you can tell in some cases the thrust angle or whether or not the axles not centered you'll see a different gap between the bottom of your uh, bedside and your wheel whether it be left or right a little too much which is it is common for some pickups to have a little bit of off center just because it's this factory but you can normally tell a big difference if it was in an accident and then always always have a dealership put it up on a lift send you pictures if they avoid a certain area there's normally a good chance that there's something wrong there like i bought this vehicle it's a sport wagon i bought it as is but they told me it had a dpf issue which all I did is I put it through like four or five force regens and then it works. No more DPF light. But they didn't tell me about the radiators. I brought up radiators earlier because, well, I had to put a radiator, condenser, and a charge air cooler in it. Which they didn't tell me about. But I also didn't look to see if the fans were working. If I would have looked, this fan was broken over here. And this fan wasn't even spinning. It was stuck. This one was cracked and stuck. So don't get overexcited when you buy a vehicle. It's a good way to cost yourself more money. I mean, this vehicle really isn't that bad. I've put 12, 15,000 miles on it since I bought it. I had them do a timing service on it, which is something you have to do every 90,000 miles on a TDI. So I bought it at 136, 138,000, and I was like, all right, throw a timing service in it. And they did. But I think this one sat a long time. I think the guy just basically lied to me about what it was because there wasn't even a center seat belt. I actually installed that. I had to rip apart the seat and install it because it was cut in both places. Weirdest thing I've ever seen. 
but always always check a vehicle over as much as you can get on your hands and knees look it over because there's a good chance that uh you will see something underneath uh i wouldn't normally be worried about any dents or anything on the rocker panels i unless it says it was a salvage title or a rebuilt i wouldn't even worry about it the where you want to be worried about is if you look at like where the subframes connect to the chassis because this would be a unibody everything is basically bolted to the actual body of this so the rear sub and the front sub are just bolted to this regular frame you'll see ripping tearing of the unibody which would be basically everything underneath that is hydroformed into this and welded intact and everything you can tell some differences if it was fixed or if it's not a factory spot weld. You can normally tell a not factory spot weld pretty easy. Uh, it just depends on also the body shop. Some body shops are super good and some are shade tree surgeons, if you will. Uh, another thing to look at is your body colors. Your bumper will normally, front and rear bumper, will normally always be a different shade. Just because plastic adheres differently than metal. And the paint adheres differently, just makes it a different shade. But if you look closely in sunlight, I'm not in sunlight. But if you see a different shade between door panels. Because normally if it's a door panel that they replace, they won't blend it. They'll just paint it to be as close as they possibly can to a quarter or the front door or to the rest of the body. But if it's like something like right here, they won't do that. They don't normally want to replace a fender because there's a lot of adhesion cutting bolts. They'll probably pop out the dent and blend it with a little bit of Bondo. Some body shops will, some won't. So if you see even like on an edge. Normally, if they get the approval to replace a, an outside door skin, they will. Other than that, they'll pop out the dent, bondo it, and blend it. And sometimes, depending on the body shop, of course, good body shops will blend it and you won't even notice it. But when it comes to full panel replacement, getting it mixed in right, super hard to do. Black's probably one of the hardest colors from what I've been told from body shop guys to match just because it fades so differently uh, If you want to look in the engine for anything that's bad Normally pull your dipstick if the vehicle has been sitting a while and you see like a white on the dipstick. Don't be worried about it Have them do an oil change If it remains white Then you have other problems but a vehicle on a lot can sit for an extended period of time. Another good place to look is actually on the bottom side of the oil cap. There's a good place for moisture to build up. Uh, if, it's, if you're able to look at fuel filters, you can definitely tell if someone's ever taken a fuel filter off. Or at least the housing to pop it off. I change mine every 10,000 miles with a man filter, which is what's made for it. Uh, another good indication that maybe it was in an accident is bad clear coat. This might be just a Volkswagen thing, but I know the clear coat is coming up here. I think this is a Volkswagen thing because I know they have certain issues. Like clear coat there comes up pretty good. Again, I don't necessarily care because it's a cheap car relatively cheap car but with Volkswagens you got to check for rust the front fenders will rust out the rockers will rust out this is a southern car so I'm not terribly worried about it uh, for your GM pickups and your 14 and below Fords those are steel body the GMs are still steel body majority uh, Fords will be steel body below 14 after the redesign they went to aluminum body 
and I think the half year they did aluminum body in the old body style. You'll see that on the cab corners uh, and the bed and even up front on the rockers. You'll see it. Uh, I've had three, four GM pickups. My 07, I believe they call it a GMT 700 or 900. And then 15, 15 or 16 and up is a GM K2XX, I believe. KXX. Yeah, I've even seen those 15s and up actually rusting as well. So I wouldn't, this depends on where you buy it. Try to buy a Southern if you can, or find one that was super taken care of. Someone who put poor 15 on the inside of it to help help prevent rust. I wouldn't be surprised if you see a newer vehicle with rust, just because of how rust care is. Basically, everything's is dipped in a wax, and the wax wears off. This is something that happens. But for the inside and the interiors you can always see if something's wrong flip your switches if it feels solid like i have a bad switch up here which and these this broke off in a high wind but these switches actually go pretty bad i've actually taken it apart and i just have to buy a new top if i wanted to if i could find it um but for these it's just other simple things like the knobs on the deals actually broke off so that's a bummer uh the shift boot on this thing was already broke i'm assuming someone probably took it apart to pull it into neutral which they broke it and you can only buy like the whole shifter assembly you can't just buy the boot but what i really need is the plastic ring on the outside that clips in and nobody actually just makes that standard, which also a bummer. Another thing to check for is headliner sag. Headliner sag is common in some makes and models. In Volkswagen, long roofs, the wagons, it is 100% a common thing. Uh, if you're looking at the sunroof option in this body style, which would be a TDI Premium, if I remember right, sunroofs are a huge issue. If you aren't scared to spend money or to work on it yourself, go for it. The biggest thing that I've seen is the drain issues in these. Coming in, soaking the headliner. Uh, there is a fix. There's a little nipple at the end, at the bottom. It'll be under here. If you snip off the drain, basically they put a little nipple on it so nothing can climb up it. Um, I can't say I've ever seen anything really climb up something like that but anything's possible if you snip that off it'll actually drain if you can run a pipe uh, pipe cleaner through it a long pipe cleaner through it clean it out make sure your tracks are clean everything else uh, make sure you buy proper lube for the track system uh, the shade actually is a big issue as well some people just take them off just cut it out and they just run it open and again, it all depends. Uh, other than that, test drives. When you test drive a used vehicle, see if it tracks straight. Get it on a road, Put hover your hands over the steering wheel. If you feel it pull left or right, check to see if you have wind. Wind will make you pull left or right. If you don't, uh, basically a general rule is 30 seconds. If it can last up to 30 seconds in a lane before it merges off, you're good. That's actually pretty good alignment. If it doesn't, or if there's a lot of steering slop, anything like that, swap it. Have, them, have the dealership do an alignment before you buy it, if you still want to buy it. Don't let a dealership bully you into buying something that you're not going to like. You gotta be strong. Because remember, you're the one paying for it, not them. They're just trying to make a couple dollars, and the salesman's trying to make a couple dollars normally. I was a salesman. 
I didn't care about getting paid. You probably should, but I didn't. I wanted my customers to be happy as possible because I don't like angry customers calling me, telling me that they bought a piece of crap. It's not cool. Uh, another thing to check is have them pull, if it's a vehicle that was a local trade, more than likely at that dealership it was serviced. Have them see if you can pull a service history on it. Normally the service uh, advisors can. I, on my 18 Denali I had, I had them do that. And I saw that they replaced a uh, human interface module, the rear uh, shocks, it had the magnetic ride on it. They replaced both of those, I think twice for the uh, rear shocks. Uh, I never really had an issue with it. I did have an oil leak that started from the oil pan, which is what it is. It was under warranty, so I didn't really care. And I got a loaner. Um, so other than that, I'd say the biggest thing is to check over a vehicle, go slow, look over it, get on your hands and knees. If you can, if you're not a car person, bring a car person with you. Nobody will nitpick a car that they have spent hours of research on more than someone who's in the cars. I did a lot of research on these, but I didn't do a lot, a lot of research on these. I still don't know very much about these. I can change the oil. I can do fuel filter. I swapped out the whole front end, uh, all three rate uh, heat exchangers. I replaced those. I know enough to fix things, but I don't know everything about these cars. I've come in the, I've been a part of some Facebook groups that do know everything. So I'm learning more. If uh, if you can't find a car friend with to bring with you, wait. Nobody likes to get screwed by a salesman who's just trying to make a quick buck. And there are a lot of those salesmen that literally just want to make a quick dollar off of you. So with that in mind, wait. Talk to someone. Bring... Your dad, your dad more than likely will have someone. If you don't have a dad, bring an uncle. If you don't have an uncle, bring a grandparent. Someone who knows something and knows where to look. If you're friends with a body man, bring a body man because he will nitpick every single panel, every paint chip. He can probably see that it's not the factory clear coat that they put on it. They didn't put enough coats on it. There is certain ways to tell. He could even bring a... Uh, a little measuring device to see how many clear coats and how many base coats are put on it. They do make tools for that. If you're worried about that type of stuff. I know I know what to look for when it comes to body panel colors. Uh, I know what to look for when it comes to just basic repairs. Like an alternator. You can see if, a, if an alternator in the engine bay is actually new. It'll be the cleanest part in there. Like this, I requested the old parts from the timing service. So, a pulley or two, tensioner, yeah. So everything I have is actually in there from that old service, so I know it was done. Is there a chance I could have just grabbed parts off the out of the trash? Yeah, possibly. I wouldn't know the difference. Um. I'd say that's probably a pretty good overview. Again, if you have any questions, don't be afraid to reach out. Nobody likes to get screwed. High-end cars are a lot different. They go through a lot more meticulous uh, overlook because they have to meet a certain spec from the manufacturer. Like uh, if a Ferrari was wrecked, it has to be within one one-thousandth of original chassis specifications in order to be recertified as a Ferrari. Other brands aren't that meticulous. Volkswagen is the parent company to Audi and Bugatti and Lamborghini and Volkswagen owns a lot of people. Their specifications are a lot different. You'll actually see, heck, you'll see a Mercedes logo on a McLaren because I think McLarens use Mercedes air fuel pickups. 
or mass airflow sensors or map sensors so you will see like this on Volkswagen parts you'll see an Audi logo normally the Audi logo doesn't mean anything they just share parts like that it's all vice versa you'll see Audi parts in VW you see VW parts on Audi because that's just who their parent company is they're not gonna make two separate sets of mass airflow sensors or map sensors just because it's an Audi or a VW cost effectiveness uh, always check for mice if the car has sat for a long time I'm assuming this one did because it was a diesel gate car if you're able to pull up your pull up the cow a little bit see what's under there normally rats will have a tiny little orgy meeting underneath the cowls I just vacuumed out the inside of this one because I never actually checked it uh, I would say that this thing's probably been apart a couple times or it sat for a long time just due to how all this is all this is and I'm assuming it probably did uh, the guy told me the salesman told me probably a line of bullshit that it was just towed behind a camper and it just never saw actual miles well I've looked and there isn't any drawbar marks so that way that means that it was probably put on a toter its whole life a two-wheel toter which if that's the case you'll never see miles racked up on it so this car was actually driven because you're not going to get miles just from pulling the rear set that doesn't really make sense but it's possible i don't know how these cars exactly work between wheel speed sensors if the Miles is picked up off the front or rear. I don't know. I just drive it while my girlfriend drives it. I drive her car. Uh, other things to look at is if a vehicle... The tire got a nail in it and they told me they couldn't fix it, so I'll bring it to someone who can. Spare tire usually helps you can always tell if the car has been neglected or not with the spare tire uh, with the Volkswagen your build codes are actually on here all your RPO codes and options uh, this one has had to use the spare tire uh, you can see that it's missing the plastic housing cap that this should actually sit in. Uh, I don't have. I do not have the uh, the tow hook. Actually, I've noticed. I just noticed that the other day. So, with that being said, some of these actually, I think this one was equipped with the the first aid kit from Volkswagen. I had another one that I owned for a week and a half before a lady pulled out in front of me, and that one actually had the cargo pods in it little cargo deals and their velcro like this was never this was opened actually that's cool probably throw it away looks like someone cut themselves yeah these bandage scissors are still closed i don't know what was in that scissors have never been opened this looks like an emergency blanket yeah here's the contents how to do cpr if you ever want to know, I do not know how to do that. So, contents made in 08, which is long before this card. This card is a 14. Looks like they used butterfly enclosures, maybe just regular band aids. So, there's easy ways to tell. Sometimes you can find some cool stuff in a used car that the tech just didn't overlook. That he just overlooked when he was looking through it and servicing it and get it all ready for detailing. Uh, this might actually be a good spot for that. Oh yeah, it is a good spot. Um, 
other things, maybe. Um, you can check to see if certain things have been touched and not just by whether or not it's clean or just anything else. Um, check to see how the glass looks. If it's the factory glass, you can normally tell because you'll see lamination separation. This is probably the original windshield for this. That's lamination. That's the separation of both layers in between the safety film that's inside. So just keep that in mind when you're looking, which there's nothing wrong with that, but more than likely probably should replace it. If it's starting to laminate, delaminate, there's a chance that the glue on the back side is actually starting to let go. And then you can get leaks around any of the corners, which would be a bummer. Other than that, I'd say that's a good starting point to look. Pay attention. Another good way to look, see if it was in an accident. Headlights. If you see one headlight is clear over the next. Like if this one was clear and this one was a little foggy, this would be your newer side. More than likely, it would have got a new bumper, new headlight, and a new fender, and possibly a hood. Normally, when you hit on this side, you normally take out quite a bit of stuff. Especially if it's a deer or something like that. Uh, other than that, enjoy the video. I know it's long. I know it's probably going to be spliced together in weird, weird area. But I'm trying to get better at this so I can do this more. Uh, any questions? Leave them in the comments. Any comments, leave them in the comments, of course. Uh, drop a sub, a like, a dislike. I don't care. Whatever the way you feel it should be rated, rate it. And have a great day.